The razor's edge is the subject this morning. And I like to get the worst things over with first. And so I have to tell you, from my own experience and the experiences of others, that it gets harder as you go along to keep on the razor's edge. But do not forget, the stakes are very high. It's worth it can be done. What are those stakes? Oneness with your father and my father eternally. And so it is worth the effort to somehow stay on the razor's edge. The razor's edge is the path of involution. Come right down to facts. Ordinary evolution has brought man along where we find him. He has reached the heights through senses, mind, and intellect. That is evolution. It is easy to follow that tide. It goes along naturally. But involution means to know the soul, which is the cause of mind, intellect, and the senses, to know the soul by the power of the soul itself. That's involution. Now that means not swimming along with the tide of evolution, ordinary consciousness, but it means turning and going against the tide. And that's why it is called the razor's edge. It is easy enough to go along with this drama of life, of evolution, but it's very difficult to turn Turn your boat against the tide and through involution know the soul or go back home to God. Now that's the razor's edge. That's the path of the razor's edge to know God within you through the power of the soul itself or intuition. It is difficult. But remember, the stakes are very high. Oneness with God. And so we are admonished to watch and pray. To watch and pray. Because we cannot remain stationary as we follow this razor's edge. We either have to go forward and upward back to God or we fall off, retrogress and somehow get back on again. There are no two ways about it. 
And that's why the Bible says, watch and pray, that you'll keep on the razor's edge and go back home to God. We can't do it because we have the power we are made in the image of God. Now a little instance comes to my a little incident comes to my mind at this time, which will illustrate better than anything else just what it means to keep on this razor's edge. Several years ago in Boston they had a sportsman show. And they had a big tank of water and they had some logs in that tank. And one big log and on that log was a lumberjack. And that log was spinning first one way, then the other, in that water. But somehow he kept upright on that log. His little feet went very fast as he uh, pedaled against the movement of that log. Vice versa, back and forth, but he stayed on that log. Now that's how hard it is, or easy, to stay on the razor's edge. Remember that illustration. I can see that fellow now, but somehow he stayed on it. He didn't fall into the water. If he had fallen off, he would have to go back, climb up again, get his balance, and start all over. So it's worth trying to stay on that log, so to speak, to stay on the razor's edge. And we should be on our toes every moment. We have to be just like that lumberjack was. Every moment we have to watch why. We have to watch to see if our actions is governed by habit and latent impulse, or is governed by independent action, which independent action keeps us on the razor's edge. We have to watch every minute. The first thing you're off. And then you have to go all over again, climb up again, and start over. You watch and you will see, but if you watch and pray, as Jesus said, if that lumberjack can stay on that rapidly moving log, we can stay on the razor's edge. So we have to watch continually and pray that we be not deluded into follow, into following action governed by habit and latent impulse, which keeps us in the evolutionary trend. Do you see that? It's easy to do that. God's made it very easy to stay in this drama of life and then have to come again and again with births and death. It's easy to stay in that. But it's difficult to get out of it. That's why the path is called the razor's edge. But we can do it, remember, because we are made in the image of God. As Sri Yukteswaraji said in his holy science, man, man, because of his special makeup, of his unique brain and spinal centers, can know things divine. He can follow this razor's edge. We have that power. Because we are made in the image of God, we've been given something that the animals and other creations do not have. We have self-consciousness and a unique, remember, brain and spinal centers whereby we can traverse without doubt the razor's edge. So there are two forces which are continually pulling at us. One, keep us in the easy way. Going along, minding your own business, just being pushed along by the tide, but you have to keep in this life of births and death. Who wants that? We want to get out of it. And the other way is to get out of it by following the intuition of the soul, following the razor's edge back to God. Now the Master has written one letter which I'd like just to read a part to you which explains this very nicely. He says this, he says, forget this dream of life. Lo, in the chamber of imagination, life is already filmed and finished. Now, this life of evolutionary life, this dream of God is already finished. You can't do a thing about it. You may vary it a little bit. You may vary your length of span of life. But very little. That's already filmed and finished in God's great consciousness. Now, the razor's edge means the path to get out of that film, to get your consciousness out of that film, back to God, back to cosmic consciousness, back home with him where you belong. That's why we came here. That's what we have to do. Now remember, the ordinary life, evolutionary life, is already filmed and finished. You can't do a thing about it. This body will take its natural span and we'll have to get rid of it. 
But we can, we can get our soul, which is attached to this body, we can liberate it by following the razor's edge back to God. That's a very important point the Master made. I want you to remember. Forget this dream of life. For lo, in the chamber of imagination, life is already filmed and finished. You can see there's destiny, but we're not subject to that. We can follow the razor's edge back to God and get out of this evolutionary life by following a life of independent action whereby we become one with God the Father. One with cosmic consciousness. Now he goes on to say, don't wait. Don't wait. You know, we say, well, now we'll do it tomorrow. We'll begin tomorrow now to follow this razor's path. I won't go. Don't wait, the Master said. Pray unceasingly for illumination and God's love. There's nothing like the illumination of God's light and his love to keep you on the razor's edge. In fact, I doubt if you can stay on it, especially as you get near the end without the presence and the realization of God's love and his light. It's impossible to stay on, but that will keep you on. Because as you go along this razor's edge, even the least little thought, even not a bad thought, but a thought tinged with material consciousness will pull you down. And you'll feel that subtle consciousness of God, his great light and his love, you'll feel it slipping away from you. So the razor's edge becomes more difficult, but the power of God's love is the greatest force in the universe, and that will keep you on the razor's edge. And so he goes on to say, don't wait, pray unceasingly. Lose not a minute. How do we know when the film will be cut off? How do we know that? It's already finished. We don't know when it's going to be cut off. Lose not a minute. Get on that razor's edge and stay on it. Until the last, those who last to the end will be saved. Even though you have not finished it completely, if you stay on it till your last breath, holding on to God, you will be lifted into his omniscience. And so the Master writes beautifully, Lose not a minute. Don't be fed up by waiting hopes of this and that. But he says, Get God now. Eat God now. Nourish yourself on eternity then you will be able to follow the razor's edge. Now going on just a bit. The purpose of life is to go back home, as I have said, to cosmic consciousness. And the razor's edge is the path. Now, whatever prevents you, whatever prevents you from going back home or whatever keeps you in this material consciousness, remember that, that takes you off of the razor's edge. Anything that keeps you from going back home to God. Now, this material consciousness certainly does not lead back home to God because we see it change every minute. We see people come and go. We see the change. Therefore, anything that keeps you in this physical consciousness, this material consciousness, this evolutionary life, takes you off from the razor's edge. Remember that. And so, following this play, following this play of God, this evolutionary play, will keep you from traveling that razor's edge back home, cosmic consciousness where you belong. And so, remember, and this is important, every action you do, every action you do, Yes, even every thought that you think either keeps you on the razor's edge or causes you to lose your balance, fall off of that razor's edge, and then you have to climb on once more and begin all over. Every action you do, remember, that's why it is called a razor's edge. Every action we do, yes, every thought we think is either keeping us on that straight and very fine razor's edge, or it's causing us to lose our balance like the man on the log and fall off and start all over. So that's very important. That's the greatest thing. That's why it is called the razor's edge. Now about the metaphysics of the razor's edge. 
Some people are interested in the metaphysics of these things. It is this. The energy, the life force in the body, the great cosmic energy of God in the sympathetic nervous system, in material consciousness, in evolutionary consciousness, flows outward, downward, through the senses. Now, if we reverse that current, if we reverse the life force of God's great cosmic energy which is within us, if we reverse that current in the sympathetic system and send it in to the spine, the six centers of the spine that I spoke of, then, reversing that current, it will pass upward to the holy mountain or the thousand-rayed lotus spoken of many times in the Bible, where God is found and where Christ is found. The metaphysics simply means to reverse the current, which naturally, according to this evolutionary life, flows outward. It's very easy to follow along with that, to enjoy sensation and outward consciousness. But if by independent action and self-realization, fellowship, yoga and meditations and prayer and dependence on God, we can turn that current in, taking the life force from the sympathetic nervous system, taking it into the spine, there it will pass up to the holy mountain, the seat of God, the holy city within us, where we will perceive our oneness with God and with Christ consciousness. So the metaphysics are simple. It simply means we must reverse the current and send it not outward to sensation, not outward to the ordinary material consciousness of evolution, but send it in, whereby through involution, it will go back home to God from whence it came. Remember the head. The head is the seat of the presence of God and his angels. The head is heaven. The holy city, Zion, Jerusalem, I often speak about that. It's not far off. It's at the end of the path of the razor's edge. And we can, by the grace of God and will, travel this path back home where we belong. And the Master has admonished us this way. He has said, remain in the brain and the heart center. This is the metaphysics. You can do it by self-realization fellowship technique. Absolutely. You can either stay in the three laws of the, of the spine and live an ordinary existence, be swept along, and go through births and deaths if you want to. That's all right. But remember, Remember, being one with God is at the end of the razor's edge. One with the, eternally with the presence of God. Isn't that worth it? We can do that by reversing the current through the techniques which the Master has given. You will feed yourself. These are not imagination. You will feed yourself, not living in the surface of the body, but living from here up. And you will feel finally when the love of God comes in your heart, you will feel something that is beyond the expression of words. You will feel the presence of God within you. That's the end of the razor's edge. Not an imagination. And you will look through the single eye of the soul and you will see, not limited, not in a limited way, but in an unlimited way. God's creation according to his grace. And so... The goal of the razor's edge is with it. We must somehow, we are his children. We must stay somehow on that razor's edge and go back home to God. And remember, every, every wrong thought here, every wrong thought will pull you down, especially as you travel further on the razor's edge. I have watched it. I have felt that Subtle consciousness within that expansion of consciousness. And one thought would slip in somehow. I don't know how it got in. I didn't want it. As St. Paul said, I don't know where these things come from. That thought would get in. Not a bad thought. Just a little thought of outward consciousness. I'd feel the other slipping off. That's why it is called the razor's edge. But you don't have to slip off. Somehow stay on that log. Stay on the razor's edge. And so the Master has said this. 
Self-control keeps you. Self-control keeps you on the razor's edge. Self-control, although it is difficult to climb the mountain of self-control, which is the path of the razor's edge, though it is difficult, when you reach the top, when you reach the top, you receive such a freedom that cannot be described. So it is worthwhile to follow the razor's edge back home. Now it speaks about this in the Bible, one or two references. It speaks about it in Psalm, the 15th Psalm, the first and second verses. It says this, it says, Lord, who shall abide in thy holy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy mountain? We can answer that those who traverse the razor's edge. The holy mountain is where? The holy mountain is a thousand red lotus where God and Christ dwell. And so it says they, in words, it says they who traverse this tricky razor's edge, somehow, by the grace of God, somehow they will realize and be one with God in the holy mountain. And so it says he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart, he shall dwell in the holy hill. That's simply saying, he who keeps on the razor's edge will dwell with God in his holy mountain. And in Matthew, the sixth chapter, 24th verse, it says, no man can serve two masters. He will either hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in matter. That simply means you cannot stay still on the razor's edge. You must progress. Otherwise, you retrogress. You cannot serve two masters. Now, there are a few uh, hints which I'd like to give, and then I'm through, about staying on the razor's edge. The first is this. True progress, or staying on the razor's edge, comes by living a life of harmony. A life in harmony with what? With God's great law. Now the yogis, the ancient spiritual teachers, found out these methods, psychophysical methods, which are simply the techniques of self-realization fellowship, they found out those ways whereby you could live harmoniously with God's law. If you do that, if you follow those techniques, then you can stay on the razor's edge. Now that's the first important hint. The next one is this. We see in life results which do not please us. We pay too much attention to the results of things. But there are only two things necessary to keep on the razor's edge. And what are they? They are this, these. That if you have in your heart an honest purpose, that's all. No matter what the results in this life will be, they will not be ideal at all, because this life is not a place of idealism. It's a place of change. But if in your heart you have honest purpose to stay on that razor's edge, and if you give intelligent effort, sincere effort, that's all, to keep on the razor's edge, no matter what the results are, you will stay on that and go back home to God. That's the second hint. It is very important. Never mind the results. The results in this life are far from ideal. Things do not come out as you want. Man proposes, but God disposes. But we can do those two things. We can have honesty of purpose in our heart. That's all God looks at. And we can give sincere effort and give the results to God. That's what's necessary. That's the second hint. And the third and last hint is this. That, and this is important, the Master has written these words. He has said, remember, God can be only known in the secrecy of your devotion. Now, if you go about telling others, acquaintances and friends of your devotion to God, he won't be there. He will not be there. It is very important in secrecy to follow God and be devoted to him, but keep it to yourself. 
This is very important. Otherwise, you will lose the contact with him. I have a letter written from a friend in Milwaukee. He's a very, very simple but very sincere man. I went to see him. He was with the Master in 1925. He's a very humble soul, but he has something that draws you to him. He has a freshness and a sweetness which I wish that I could always have myself. And he wrote in his letter these words. He said, I will do what I can to establish good here. Then he said, I like to work silently. It is much louder. That's the most beautiful thing. He's a very simple man. And when you see him, you just feel that sweetness. And so remember, that which you feel of God in your silence, keep it to yourself. And then it will speak loudly to others by your own action and your own example. These are very important words. And finally, finally, just to sum up, remember that the path is difficult. Remember the log rolling story. It's difficult to stay on it, but the stakes are very high. And what are those stakes? Those stakes are oneness. Oneness eternally. The master of the universe, isn't it worth it? We must never forget the importance of that. And we have, we have the example of the master, his wonderful example of his life, and we have his encouraging words to urge us on to adamantly somehow stay on the razor's edge when he said these things. He said, someday, someday, as the path, the razor's edge, is finally traversed, you will wake up in God, in spiritual consciousness, and you will see that you are not a fleshly being, but life eternal. That's the end of the razor's edge. You will see yourself not a fleshly being, but the eternal flame of God. You realize your oneness with that eternal flame, and you realize, which cannot be expressed in words, <coughs> is great omniscient love.